Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing this Aida Underbus corset made by Vollers. So here's the front, the side, the back, and the other side. The center front of this corset is nine and a half inches high. The center back is a little bit shorter. This is nine inches high. On the side here, you can see that it cuts up over the iliac crest and it's only seven inches high on the side. So you might actually consider this more of a center than a full underbust corset. In terms of the silhouette, I would definitely say that this is a modern slim silhouette. This is a size 24 corset, but you can see that I still have about an inch gap in the back there. I am not able to close this corset fully because of the hips. Uh, you remember last week, I was able to close a size 22 corset uh, because it had a different silhouette. So for the circumferential measurements of this particular corset, the underbust is about 28, the, the waist is uh, 24, and the hips are about 30. So for this particular corset, the underbust is about 4 inches larger than the waist and the hips are about 6 inches larger than the waist. However, Vollers does have a made-to-measure service, so if you want this corset to be a little bit curvier and made for your body, then it would be a 25% markup. If any of you are noticing that the silhouette is different on each side of the body, it is attributed to this metal zip closure here. So this is how you get in and out of the corset, this metal zip, and the front lacing here is merely decorative. On this side, it's closed and it just has a bone on the seam here so because the zipper actually replaces the bone on one of the seams it is a little bit less structured on this side and so it tends to bend in at the waist a little bit more so I'm curvier on this side than I actually am on this side so here's the Aida Underbust laying flat and the main reason that I wanted to try this particular corset was due to the zip closure in the side back here. I have relatively little experience with corsets that have zip closures. I only tried uh, two before this one and it's interesting to see the differences in how they actually insert the zipper and whether it stands up to tension or not. Now this one actually does stand up to about four inches reduction. I think this corset is marketed to people who are uh, dancers uh, in burlesque so they can have a really easy out from their corset. But in any case, for the materials of this, it, I believe it's two main layers. It has the ivory satin on the outside, although you can get it in red if you want to. And then on the inside here, you can see that it's also lined in ivory twill. For the construction of this corset, it's actually made from a 13 panel pattern. Now it's kind of difficult to see where it starts and where it ends, but basically this is a center front here and because it has a closed front, then it's a single panel right there. And then after that, you have another six panels on each side. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six and that brings you to the lacing panel. And for the actual assembly of this corset, it seems as though the fashion fabric and the lining were flat lined together and the panels were assembled using a top stitch. So it is at least double stitched between the uh, seams here. Um, the boning is actually in internal twill boning channels laid on the seams. So it's single boned on the seams here. The center front here, these three panels actually don't have bones in them. It feels slightly stiffened, uh, most likely because of how they had inserted this decorative lacing here. So it is a little bit sturdy, but it doesn't actually have steel bones in the front. And if I hold this corset on an angle so that you can see the light shining through it, you can see that there's no waist tape present in this corset. Here's a close-up of the binding, and it's made from this commercial black ribbon, so it's not folded under and then stitched, because the ribbon itself already has a finished edge that is not going to fray. So it is actually a single line of machine stitching that's securing it down on the outside and on the underside, but it's fairly neat. The modesty panel is unstiffened and it's made from two layers, the ivory satin and the twill again. It is about six inches wide, so it's wide enough for me, and it's secured down with a line of stitching on this one side. So if you don't like modesty panels, then of course you can remove it if you want. You can also see there is a modesty placket underneath the zipper here. It is one and a half inches wide, made from ivory twill, and it's unstiffened. The zip closure is about six inches long and it has metal teeth, which in my opinion is a bit stronger than the nylon. Um, this is not a YKK zipper, it says Riri on it, so I'm assuming that's a different brand here, but it seems to be holding in fairly well. Um, this is secured in with what looks like a single line of stitching, but it might actually be lock stitched, so it might be stitched twice. It is not supported by any bone underneath here, so like I said before, it is a bit flexible and it can't 
tends to bow in a little bit when you're wearing it. So I would use this corset for light reductions, for occasional wear, special events and things like that instead of actual waist training or tight lacing. This corset has 13 steel bones total. It has an odd number of bones because this one zipper is uh, replacing one of the bones on the seams here. But there are nine flexible steels around the, the sides here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then of course there are four steel bones in the back sandwiching the eyelets on each side. There are a total of 18 single part size double zero eyelets in this corset with a small to medium flange around them. None of them seem to be pulling out. Um, they are spaced equidistantly along the waist here, about one inch apart. Here you can see a close above the eyelet, so you can see that there is no washer present. It has uh, just a single part. It's the type of eyelet that splays outwards and grabs onto the back of the fabric here. It doesn't seem to catch onto the laces too much. Um, this might be also attributed to the type of laces here. They seem to be nylon, very thin, uh, smooth, uh, shoelace style laces that are very resistant to any sort of stretching and virtually impossible to break. The Ayuda underbust cost £195 in the UK which converts to about $310 in the US. If you would like this made to measure it's a 25% markup so it would be another £50 or so. So this concludes my review of the Ayuda underbust corset made by Vollers. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did then please remember to click that like button and help support the channel and if you have any comments or questions feel free to leave them down below. I'd be happy to get back to you. I'll see you after the weekend for the next video. Bye!